And we're back with the Vacuous Perspective, episode six. Nate, it's good to see you. You too, Val. How um, you feeling? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, the we're we're back to give you sort of the TLDR. Do you know what that stands for? The low. Wait, it's not the lowdown. TLDR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In nerd speak, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's too long. Didn't read, right? Oh, so if someone okay. just give you the TLDR, they'll write yeah. this big fucking long paragraph, and then they'll go TLDR. Um, if you don't want to have your organs harvested against your will, don't check to see if you're an organ donor, right? <laughs> and your story would be above that. Right. Now we're here to give you the TLDR version of the TLDR because. We we didn't even read the TLDR at this point, right? We, we read half of it, went, fuck, that's interesting, and now we're sharing it with you. So well, I'm ready to hear the TLDR. Yeah. If you, yeah. Want to, if you want to tell me what the TLDR is? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I It was too long. I didn't read it. I, I read only a part of it, and then here it is. Which part of it did you read? Just the first bit, the first bit. Just the first TLDR. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the first mm. few bits where I got a gist of I got I got the gist. What was the headlines? I, I have no idea. I'm just telling you like what we do in general is we give you the TLDR version of the TLDRs. We're we're not experts, we don't claim to be experts, but we're here and we're giving it up for free. To tell you why. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Anything happening this week? Oh, I'm I'm feeling a bit dangerous. Ooh, dangerous. Why yeah. is that? Saw the new Top Gun movie. Hoo wee. I was and pretty happy with it. I heard it. I hear it's great. I hear it's amazing. I was pretty happy with it. I'm not a big fan of action movies and all all that drivel. No, Do no, no. Generally. And we're not here to spoil the movie either. But no. let's just because I'm I'm pretty expert at this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna circumnavigate the spoilers because I haven't seen the movie and I'd like to see it as well with open and fresh eyes. But by um, the time this episode releases, it wouldn't be a spoiler. Uh, it's still a spoiler for me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to give any spoilers. I'll keep that in mind. No, no, no. No, no. This is what I'm going to – I'm going gonna to direct the question so you won't give away any spoilers, right? Okay. Um, Tom Cruise is back. Acting good? I thought it was fine. I thought it he's was good. He's a good actor. He's yep. a good actor. He might be a scumbag and a weirdo, but he's a good actor. Is that, is that about is – that, is that fair? Confirmed. Um, what about the – okay, so we talked a lot about – Earlier, we talk, talked about the stunts and how they were being done in the new Top Gun. A bit of uh, realism, uh, emphasis on realism and stuff like that. How did you feel watching the sort of... I didn't notice any stuff? stunts that come to mind. Well, not stunts, but just no the airplane footage was apparently Tom Cruise in the cockpit. and you know, like Really? All his veins and, popping out of his face? This is what I mean, man. Like he was in... This is what I mean. They, they don't do this, you know. They, they don't just give you a plane. That You know, Hollywood goes, knock, knock, give us a plane. They're like, no, that's millions of dollars of equipment. This is what I don't understand, though. Apparently mm. the first movie... So what I did is I watched the first movie with my girlfriend on the Saturday night. How was that? Because she hadn't seen it before. And I hear... Yeah, it's good. It's great. I actually thought, I actually thought it held up okay. Yeah, good movie. It, was, it came out in the year of our birth. It's mm. older than I am. That is pretty crazy. But one thing I noticed from watching the first one is it has this real homoerotic vibe to it. Okay. Between what? Tom Cruise and, and his... All, and the, all the fighter pilots. All of them. It's weird. Them. It's weird. They're always like kind of... I think they're trying to one-up each other a little bit and they've got this like smarmy look about them. Mm. Okay. It's weird. And then you have the beach volleyball scene where he's wearing jeans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? No, no, no. I've been wearing full jeans. It's been a long time since I would have seen Top Gun. I'm more a fan of Hot Shots and Hot Shots 2. I could probably I tell need, you the I need to watch that. Top I need to rewatch that. I could, probably, I could probably tell you the story of Top Gun and Rambo from just the Hot Shots movies. Yeah. <laughs> I only saw them when I was really young. I need to watch those again for sure. Uh, yeah, look, um, Hot Shots 1 is Top Gun, like is a Top Gun ripoff, but right. Hot Shots 2 is a sort of – every action movie ripoff, including sort of Rambo and that sort of stuff. But Hot Shots 1 is is very around Topper Harley being, I think, a, an Air Force pilot like like uh, Tom Cruise's character. Okay, okay. Uh, look, I found the beach volleyball scene in the jeans quite uh, unusual. Mm. And then they revisit it in number two. There's a lot of throwbacks. I knew there was going to be a bit like a beach scene. 
<coughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but was, was, so there was no Top Gun 2 in the 90s or the 80s or anything like that? No. This is the direct sequel? Yes, yes, it I'm is. I'm beach volleyballing again. Oh, don't uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, wins or whatever. There, there, there were jeans on the beach, is what I'm saying. Jeans on the beach. There were jeans on the beach. Again, again, controversial. Massive spoilers. Jeans on the beach, everybody. Don't buy your tickets. Forget about it. Stay home. Um, no, 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 no. That's great. I'm excited. There's three things as well that, are, that I noted that they improved on number two. And I'm not giving away any spoilers. I think because I've watched them so closely together, I could make these kind of, you know, these things stood out to me. In number one, Tom Cruise has a pretty massive monobrow. And if it's not a monobrow, it's ungroomed eyebrows. I don't groom my eyebrows, but someone probably should have been doing something to his brows in that movie. Unless it was like an actor's choice and he said, look, I want the eyebrows. It's the eyebrows or I walk. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck goes on. I know that Tom Cruise was contract. Was that, his, was that Tom Cruise's first movie or is, am I just... Nah, man, nah, man, nah, okay. nah, nah. I think he, he would have done Risky Business before that, right? Um, I, I, I don't, I, same, sounds familiar, I don't recall it. It's the one where he dances with the broomstick naked, not naked, but in his underwear in the hall. Like he's, oh, okay. <laughs> is that the right, am I, am, I, am I going crazy? Is that the I don't right know, I, I can't see Tom Cruise doing that. I see, I, see something, I see a different movie, but. Tom Cruise carries a lot of weight though on these projects and he was, I think from what I read, the TLDR, TLDR, yeah. um, he was kind of adamant that they are in the cockpit, that they get in these real jets and fly around and shit. In, in number two, yeah. In number two. And perhaps yeah. number one, who knows? Okay. I don't think so, but I, it could be. Well, I have a comment about the jets as well. Um, mm. yeah. that, oh, before that we go yeah. on to from there, sorry, I just need yeah. to quickly go, if you go back to the beach volleyball, right? Yeah. If you, if you found that strange uh, viewing, if you found that strange in that sort of like you felt like it was homoerotic or something, right? Then no, it's not, it's not just that scene. All the change room sure, scene. Sure, sure, sure. It's but kind of like this weird if vibe. It's, if it's in the film as much as you, you're saying it is, I cannot see a world where Hot Shots didn't like rip yeah, on it. Yeah, for so, sure, 100%, 100%. So you need to watch Hot Shots now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. Hot yeah. Shots 1. Um, give us your review of that next week if you could. Oh, well, um, oh, sorry, go on the jets, please. No, no, I was going to say this. They were really sweaty in number one as well. They're all very sweaty. If you watch it again, they're all be speeds, of, speeds of sweat. No, no, but whatever they're doing, like they're just sitting around having a oh, meeting. Oh, sure. Did they not have air conditioners back then? Maybe it's like a, it's part of the training. You know, you got to endure sweat box. tough conditions or something. No, look, there's no reason to just be sweaty in a boardroom, right? Um, and they kept the sweat down to a minimal until near the end. You started seeing some sweat beating on, on okay. a couple of the, on a couple of the characters, and um, <clears throat> the other thing was the, the the sex scene was pretty awkward in number one. There was a lot of like weird tongue dipping. Ooh, yeah, okay. It was like just dropping his tongue I into think the. That's just how they did sex scenes in the nineties, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm going crazy again. Extreme, extremely French, and then so his his Tom Cruise's love interest in one. Right? A lot of the characters made it through from one to two, but they mm. don't really explain his love interest. So they don't really mention her, right? Because she's this sort of sixty year old pensioner, um, or if not older. Tom Cruise looks identical. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. So. Is, is Tom Cruise 60 years old? Well, it was 30-something years ago. That Jesus the... Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that'd be great. Hook Tom Cruise up with this 60-year-old lady. That would be great. So you can see, I, I did see a photo of her. So what, was he banging some 20-year-old in it? Yeah, they basically just went a younger, oh, younger yeah. model. Yeah, maybe not, not a 20-year-old. She was a mature woman okay, okay, looked okay. a lot hotter yeah, than look. the other actor looks now. But you know what? The first it's actor probably, probably didn't think she could be up for another role. After a few t- 20 years of no, you know, Top Gun 2, mm. she's probably thinking, I can let myself go a bit. Maybe she was holding on early on, thinking maybe number two will come out. I need to hold my figure. Well, uh, if you watched the original Superman series from our childhood, like Superman 1, 2, 3, and 4, they do the whole Lois thing with Superman. And yeah. then later they just have him like bang this lovely blonde chick instead while she still works at the Daily Planet or whatever, just like, oh, hey, Superman, what are you up to? Like, it's so, it's so fucking weird. 
I, I, I maybe I blocked up the memories of that movie, but I'm pretty sure I watched it recently. Yeah. So weird because that actress actually sort of went homeless famously. Like, like she went from being a big movie star to like proper, um, yeah. what do you call it? Like rock bottom. You know what rock I mean? Rock bottom, yeah. Drug yeah. addict. I don't know. Maybe prostitution. Maybe. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. But um, I, I was. I'm a big Norm Macdonald fan. Yeah. And he talked about on a podcast that he went broke three times in his life because he's now sadly passed away. But um, while he was alive, he went broke three times um, because of gambling. He was gambling on sports. Mm. Dangerous. Yeah. Oh, the man, silent killer. Wild. But uh, that's got nothing to do with Top Gun. That's just there is, there is a comment I want to make, but I feel like it could be a bit of a spoiler. So I'll, I'll hold off on it. Um, yeah, okay. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah, fair enough. Um, have did you, you, uh, there were a lot of Gs pulled. Yeah, a lot of Gs. A lot of Gs. Yeah, a lot of G action. Man, okay. It must be great. People, I haven't heard a bad word about it. Have not heard a bad word about it. Yeah, I, I liked it. I really liked it. Um, oh, also, you know how we were chatting a few weeks ago how I said in the trailer there was um, at least a glimpse of the SR-72 yes. Dark Star? Okay, yes. so so the movie's out now, right? Oh, and uh, clearly, if, if we haven't, you know, if you haven't sort of figured that out, then um, we're not doing a good job of the TLDR. But it makes more than just a cameo. But So I looked into it more, and obviously there's more information about it now. Mm-hmm. And this isn't a spoiler because it's just at the beginning of the movie. It's just like a, a bit of a scene. Sure. Um, <clears throat> he's riding around in it, right? And then, and so now they've, and he pulls some G's in it. Basically, it doesn't really feature in the in the story or anything other than just um, it sort of sets up a bit of character development. But how did they do this? It's not. It's not a real. It's not the real SR seventy two Dark Star. Mm-hmm. So apparently, that's a year and a half away from even being um, flown. Yet alone, like it's, 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 it's not going to tell you the date. They're going to let you know when they're ready to take her up. Come on, man, it's gone up. We all know it's gone up. <laughs> they prime the public for it. Oh man, that's great. That's great. I still don't know how they got that deal done. I don't know if it was done by uh, like military interests or whether or not Hollywood just went, "Hey, um, wouldn't it be cool if uh, you chucked it in?" And they went, "Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool." I have no idea. Well, this sort of feeds into what you're saying about the <clears throat> the planes and whether Tom Cruise is in the plane and things like that. So these things, I don't know what they cost, right? But a fighter jet must be like fifty mil plus. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so yeah, and these, these are million. big. These, this is a big budget movie. So I mean, I'm sure they could buy some fighter planes if they if they wanted, right? Yes. But yeah, maybe, right? But that's a huge expense. Who's going to fly them? Tom. Tom. Tom <laughs> train him up. They'll put him in the program. But apparently the first one cost fuck all to produce. Apparently the first one was produced for 15 mil or something, but it was all all the gear and everything was supplied by the military. Mm, so they actually backed it and it was a bit of a recruitment type tool to make sure. – It's, make a, it's, really, it's cool. a really interesting um, way of getting – you know, not just not just new recruits, but hey, representing the army as the fucking good guys who are just doing the fucking best job ever. You know what yeah, I mean? It's a bit it's a bit propaganda y like that. So it's I don't know I don't it's propaganda. <laughs> no, yeah. they wouldn't do that. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. But I don't know if that happened in number two, but apparently number one cost it was, yeah, cost uh yeah. Need to be fact checked on that, but it wasn't it wasn't a news article that cost fifteen mil to make, which seems unusually low. It wasn't the eighties, but I mean, wouldn't Tom Cruise's bloody you know personal check be that much? Well, not back then, not in the eighties, right? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I not. Have no idea. I don't know if they're involved in this one, but there's like aircraft. Yeah, there's like an aircraft carrier, of course. That's not a spoiler. There's no aircraft carrier. Um, they're not going to build an aircraft carrier. I suppose they could just build a platform. No, that it's like all an made. Could be CGI. Time. No, nah, it's just made all in conjunction with the army. Anytime you're featuring the army or featuring, like if you said, I want to do a true story about like the day we captured Osama bin Laden, which they did, the CIA just get involved. You know what I mean? Or like the army get involved because they're like, look, uh, you probably need us to be there so that we can tell you like what the fuck. It, you but know, they would have a huge say in the movie then, right? They're absolutely. like, if you're using our plane, you can't make us look incompetent. 100%. 
You have to make us look. Yeah, so they'll have a lot of... They'll they have would have approved the script. They would have said, this script is fucking great. Here's your planes. You know, they would have loved it. What I love about it is they don't make any comments about who the enemy is and you never see any skin colour, any... Ambiguous. Major- yeah, like it. so it's just like this this sort of like elusive enemy threat. Yeah, yeah. But they Anybody. never go into yeah, yeah. And again, oh, I won't I won't there is another comment I'd make, but don't want to give a spoiler, so I, I won't. Sure. But, um I did find that really funny how they sort of tiptoe around who the enemy is and, and just give you nothing. It's just to make it applicable to the next generation and the generation after that. America's always got an enemy at the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, anyway, you, just, you just sort of, um, just pick one. yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's a, just a blank sort of uh, blank spot where you just insert enemy here. I mean, surely people have done studies and like looked into the, uh, say, enemy's aircraft and been like, look, they're clearly p- depicting these guys or these guys because of the equipment that they're using like who that's who's being depicted but never stated oh you know what I mean? yeah 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 and yes 100 percent. that, that was kind of weird i actually had a big movie weekend now that i think mm. about it I, I think i mentioned before i rarely watch movies mm. um but i watched yeah, top gun one top gun two yep because it was wa day yesterday so yeah we had a day off yep brilliant Happy wa day brilliant did you see the drone thing for WA Day? The the, the little uh, swarm they had down in Burzwood oh, Park. I heard that there was a drone show on somewhere. That's worth checking drones? out just yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah okay. It's hey, cool. on the PS, uh, you said that Top Gun got made for fifteen million dollars. Yeah. Well, here's a movie. Have you checked it? No, here's a movie that also cost around that amount of money. Made in 1977. Okay. Star Wars, eleven yeah. million. 11 mil, is that it? 11 million to, to make the first one, yeah. Fuck, that's nothing. Nowadays, you when you see a movie budget, you need to times that number by two. Okay, and the reason you do that is because that's how much marketing money they spend. What, and is that not included? Not included in the film budget, no. Okay. Well, I so, can confirm, yeah, Top Gun yeah, on, 1, 15 mil US. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Top Gun Top Gun 2. Okay, hold on. Give me a give me a give me a uh, budget on that. That's got to be into 170. the seventy. How much? So hundred seventy. Yeah, hundred more than ten times. So they're still getting help. One hundred percent. They're still getting help. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm I, I'm still gonna watch it. I'm still gonna watch it. You should. You mentioned it's WA Day. Mm. It's actually the day after now. So it's oh, June seventh. Day after. Mm. Um, I had a look into the history books to find out if anything happened on June sixth. Oh, June seventh. Sorry, June. 7th. Guess what? Well, wait, bloody so did. today. Yeah, oh, tell me. Some, yeah, oh, some stuff happened today. Yeah, ages this, ago, this, though. This old news. This is old news, man. This is old right. news. Um, What's the TLDR? I, um, oh, look, there's a few births today. You know, you might have heard of him. Uh, the artist known as Prince was born today. Nice. nice. Mike Pence, Dave Navarro. Bear Grylls and Bill oh, Hader. Yeah, who's Dave Navarro? He was the guitarist in the Chili Peppers when oh. John Frusciante left oh, okay, after okay. Blood Sugar Sex Message. He yeah. only performed on One Hot Minute. He, you might have seen his like tattoo show or his fucking like he he was um, Jane's Addiction's front man. Like I'm pretty sure. What Bear Grylls is also born today. You know Bear Grylls. Oh, He's no, the smallest guy. Who? Uh, What's his actual like, first name? Is his first name Bear? Yeah, I fucking hope so. Better be. I thought maybe that'd be his nickname or something. I just don't know who calls their child bear. Uh, probably some fucking nature people, man. He's clearly born into that life, right? You know what I mean? They're obviously yeah. like nature people. Bear Grylls. Um, and Christopher That's Lee. A badass name. Bear Christopher Grylls. Lee would have been 100 years old today. Who's Christopher Lee? He was Count Dooku in Star Wars. Oh, he was the he was the enemy bad guy wizard in Lord of the Rings. So he, he was a bunch bad guy. of things, man. Um, yeah, but funnily enough, he's actually a fucking like war hero and shit in England. He like he's done it all, man. He's had a pretty interesting life. I'm yeah. sure that there's been things made about him. And uh, here's another fun Wait, fact: he started he started as a war hero, and then he leveraged that into acting. Yeah, you just go. You got to have a career, right? After you're done being a soldier, right? You got to do something. I guess so. It's, I, I like it. I like it. Most people well, just think of the private sector. Stephen Bogart, the rugby player, is now a senator in Australia. Yeah. He got elected into the Senate. Yeah, 
Yeah, bloody oath. That's going to happen. I love, I love those hardcore career changes. What's Ash Barty going to do with herself? I was thinking football. Women's AFL. Yeah. Is there any yeah. actual talk of that? I like it. I think I think she'd do it. I think she'd do it. Like, imagine, imagine, text. imagine having enough tennis money to just be able to go, you know what, fuck it, I don't need to make millions of dollars a year anymore. I don't need that. I've got money. I'll uh, pursue my my real interests, which might she might have been football when she was younger. Just like, another just just where she interests out of a hat, like maybe. Yeah, bloody oath, I would. Why not? If I can give it a go. I mean, Michael Jordan played baseball. Mm. But it's also a sport. So it's kind of like not so. I know that baseball's different, you know, vastly different from basketball. Yeah, but it's still a sport. I'd be, I'd be think it was weirder if you became a school teacher. Right, so you think that like um, politics is not that weird though, because I guess you got a bit of popularity. But yeah, school teacher would be weird. Um, well, became an astronaut. Can you imagine if Michael Jordan became an astronaut? Can you imagine if he then walked on the moon? That'd be great. But yeah, some people can do anything they fucking want. And then he comes back and wins another NBA triple championship. Triple yeah. championship. He's, do, he's that, doing it again. That would have been. <laughs> that is how you go down as the goat. Not just not just a basketball of just the world. The world yeah. goat. Yeah, you're walking on the moon one week, you're fucking getting championship yeah, rings. Triple, a triple championship, then you leave, you walk on the moon, you come back and win another triple championship. Never be done again. But um, here's another fun one, right? In 1917, yeah, there okay, was the... Like D-Day. No, 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 no. The deadliest non-atomic explosion. Sorry, was D-Day's the World detonate. War II. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit off, 20 years or so. Oh, whoa, 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 what? Say again? The deadliest non-atomic explosion was detonated. The biggest non-atomic, so non-nuclear. Where? Okay, so in, I think it's Belgium, right? Belgium, okay. These British uh, army dudes uh, mined out the earth in order to mine the front line underneath the targets, underneath the Germans, right? Really? So 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 they're tunneling. Yeah, they're just tunneling into the... tunneling. Okay, okay. And the, the Germans are tunnelling, having counter-tunnelling. <laughs> they're they're counter-tunnelling while they're tunnelling. Well, was that a thing? Yeah, yes, of course it would be. This of was course. a thing. What happens that when two tunnels was... meet? Like, they, they sort of like dig into each other? They'll be like, Fuck. Exactly, exactly. You'd hear someone going, are you mining at the moment? And he'd go, no, are you? He'd go, no. And what the fuck is that sound coming from just over there? And then, boom, they break through your wall and go, hey, guys, we're just going to um, walk this up now. How many tunnels would have collapsed? Yeah, exactly. They did. Stuff. They yeah. did on the way to plant these mines, right? That's a so shit that, job. That is a shit job. So they planted these mines, right? And this is a this is this was called the deadliest non-atomic explosion, but it was actually a series of explosions, right? Yeah. That all took place at about three o'clock in the morning, nineteen seventeen. So, a while back, one hundred and five years ago, they killed ten thousand German soldiers. In, the, in in that series, in a series of explosion that can be sort of. Grouped together yep. as one. Yeah. So that's three, a, lot, that's a lot of people. Ten thousand. It's a bunch. It's a bunch. In the German history books, actually, I read this. Could that, you um, imagine that thing going up? There would have been so much um because it's underground. Oh, it was chaos, man. These craters that were created by it yeah. were fucking massive. Because they're on an underground. <laughs> people got fucked up, man. This it, it's actually yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um here's here's uh, sorry, what was I saying? I was um a deep um, you. um they planted all these mines. They did this. They did this thing. One of the generals quoted saying, "Saying something like, gentlemen, I don't know whether we are going to make history tomorrow, but at any rate, we shall change geography." Oh. How fucking nuts is that shit, um, man? How so, big, so, what were we talking? Um, did they say? So what was it like? Dynamite? What? How do you make a big explosion? What do you use back? So then? they're using like mines. They're oh. using like a like it's I don't know what they are like mines. yeah yep so th- there's some fascinating shit because there's a whole list of every mine that got planted some of them are still where they are like there's one that's just underneath this house um, that they just know is there um, another one got struck by lightning like five years later and, and went it off. caused it to detonate yes yeah nice oh my god just I know why I'm saying nice it's it's pretty cool landmine crazy, crazy. Mining, yeah. 
And um, oh my god! So I, I did read don't have much, We don't have many unexploded ordinances um, in Not WA. Very little, yeah, very little. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, zero. Right? Uh, you know, maybe in the war we would have planted some at sea, like sea mines. Maybe, mm. maybe during the war we would have done that, possibly. But no, the the other thing that happened today, right, just as mm-hmm. this is even, I don't know how I can outdo it, but like. Um, there was this thing you might be aware of. It's the earthquake of Port Royal. It happened in 1692. Okay. I never heard of it. I'm listening. Okay. So basically big earthquake happens at Port Royal, which is Port Royal was like where the pirates hang out. Like traditionally, you know, where like buccaneers chilled and, um, people described it as like the worst place in the world, you know, like just, just full of debauchery. Full of debauchery. Where X marks the spot on the pirate maps? Where yeah, exactly. What, what country yeah, are we talking? Yeah, Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, Jamaica. So they Island, had Port Island Royal. Vibes. Yeah. Um, basically, they had this big earthquake and all of the sort of buildings were on pretty much sand, right? Okay. This earthquake hit so hard. There were people saying, ah, oh, that's cool. We're, we're cool here. Like, it's just a tremor. And it's true that like uh, the island of Jamaica does have uh, a bit of a tremor problem, but Okay. Not crazy earthquakes, right? Bit of a fault line. A bit of a fault line. The ground fucks like the the ground starts fucking moving under these guys' feet. The earthquake uh, hits hard. Three forts that were on the island out of I think six sunk within a few minutes. Three what? Forts, like they construct forts, forts, forts to to pre- to protect it on a the outside. Fort sunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all, it's all built on sand and shit. Like it's just bad, bad building, right? Right. So the three forts sunk in a minute. So all the all the fucking buildings just went right. Yeah. Um, the earthquake sort of splits the ocean a mile offshore, you know, and then comes yeah. back, you know, as a six foot uh, wave, right? Yeah. Because now that you've had your all like three in the first three minutes, two thousand people are dead. By the way, right? Two thousand people are dead. Long, in the how long it went on for? The earthquake went for three minutes. Okay. 2,000 people dead within the first three minutes. 700 that is a long years. fucking time it's to brutal, be in an earthquake. It's hell on earth. How slow it's was that three minutes? Hell though. on earth. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're talking about the craziest thing ever. 700 people who died of the 2,000 I mentioned were African slaves. So mm. just bad shit, right? Mm. Um, because and now that you've had your three minutes of earthquake and and two thousand people are dead now it's tsunami time. It's, you know, oh, now, yeah. oh yeah, now, time tsunami's time coming. Out, yeah. now, now the water's coming back right because it's 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 coming back you know it's coming back to to wash over the whole the whole island right. Yeah, takes away some buildings, fucking just levels people, kills them right. It's it's, it's nuts, man. So two thousand people die in the first three minutes. Two thousand yeah. people die following. In the, in the following sort of days, months or whatever from sickness due to like malnutrition, all the fucking decomposing bodies everywhere. It was, it was like what you were talking about where you were like, I want to like, you know, you don't want to, but you, you know, to, you don't know what you would, how you would react if the cataclysm was to occur. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This time you had three minutes and if you survived the first three minutes, it's still fucked. Like it's still bad news bears. Um, it's like end of the world. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's apparently Jamaica sits. It's in between two plates. Uh, yeah, it straddles the Caribbean plate and the Ganavi plate, microplate, the largest of four microplates that are caught in a crunch between the North. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's got a history of deadly earthquakes. Yeah, well, and it's now, the I'm going to show you a and liquefaction. I've seen that word before, liquefaction. Yes this liquefaction thing came up. You know what that means? It's like the water interacting with the, here's the TLDR, interacting with the sand, causing the sand particles to separate. The water fucking gushes up. It just comes up, like creates quicksand, like insta quicksand. Shit, son. It's bad. Anyway, I'm going to show you this picture. This is the a comparison of the Port Royal earthquake, sorry, the effect of the Port Royal earthquake on the, the border, on the harbour, on, on the actual new... Yes, yeah, so the shoreline so, you can yeah. see there. Shoreline, you can see yeah. the present shoreline, which there's a bunch of. Yeah. You can see the 1692 shoreline in yeah. red, and then the blue one is what happened after the earthquake happened. So what, the rest is underwater? Exactly. 
Holy moly. And so a lot of land came after that. So is that volcanic or is that just it just was rising slowly out of the water? Because the, the I present know, day. I mean, you, you remember that um, remember, remember that earthquake that happened like last year or even this year? Um, the Tonga Tonga one or whatever. I think I'm not yeah. sure it was something like that. I, I might have just butchered that. Yeah. But look, um, it was huge, right? And it actually like so it actually swallowed like most of the island, which was only a new island to begin with. So like, we're talking about three hundred years here, four hundred years. Mm. You know what I mean? To get to to get to present day is three hundred and fifty, three hundred thirty odd years. So I don't know how much can happen in that time. But so you're saying that this was a shoreline. So I mean, this could have this could have wiped out the pirates. This could be their their um their sort of dinosaur extinction moment. Maybe what happens if there was a pirate party, and all the pirates were in Jamaica for the Port Royal Festival of, sure. 19, of 1692 and they just got liquefied. Well, don't you think it sort of screams sort of wrath of God shit and that the powers that be at the time would have used it as a sort of way to be like, look what happened to the pirates, man. They all got fucked up because they because of their bad deeds and their, you know, because their jerk faces, they got wiped out by the fucking glory of God. You know what I mean? They would yeah, use that. They're they're probably, yeah, this is, they're probably accusing them of being homosexuals or something ridiculous. Yeah, they like blame HIV and stuff on... Yeah, when there was big Save hurricanes it. and stuff, yeah, there, yeah. there'd be those like crazy right wing people who say, "Oh, um, this is God yeah. saying He's angry with you and yeah. how you live and stuff." Yeah. It's a load of rubbish. <laughs> so that was uh, seven June. So is that is that everything that happened on seven June throughout that's history? Shit, man, uh, I, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I, I sort of like big big day. Laugh. Uh, I th- I thought you'd be interested in this uh, this 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 Port Royal thing because it sort of harks back to uh, our conversations about sort of like you know lost civilizations and stuff, right? Because yeah, there are buildings under there. A lot of booty, a lot of booty down there. A lot of pirate booty would have been lost. Hundred percent. One of the guys who um, was there was quoted saying, and this is interesting in the way that he uh, he orders this. He says he lost his wife, his child apprentice which i assume means an apprentice yeah yeah six slaves and everything i had not the slaves no oh well part of me's like oh i'm glad he put them above the stuff he has <laughs> Do you know what i mean like i know it's still fucking the worst shit ever but what if, the- he said, oh, if he said, if he if he said, I lost my fucking gold watches and and uh, and my and my and my beautiful furniture, oh, and my slaves, my like, replaceable slaves. Yeah. So, look, mm. fucked up shit. Just shows so you. What's what's so it doesn't have the magnitude of the earthquakes. I assume that the Richter scale like seven, had been is that, is that good. Seven. It sounds large, but I mean, it could be bigger. But it depends how close it is to the epicenter. Like if this, if this is a magnitude seven, bang on the island. Yeah, it's got, it sounds like it was by where the tectonic plates sit. That would have been literally the crust of the Earth, sli- two two plates sliding violently over each other by the sound of things. Like three minutes of movement would be a heck of a lot. And clearly, by the actual shoreline. Yeah, changes. I think you know, I think there would have legitimately been pirates there and just people who legitimately thought this is the end times and God is coming to secure like His victory upon us. Now you would have to be like freaking out, man. They're talking about like the you know the Earth's melting below you. The yeah, Earth is melting. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the fact it's even moving at all. And then the and tsunami had, rolls. So this is what this is weird. I've got this big pile of mulch um, that I got delivered out outside my house that was you sign up to this free mulch delivery service and then three years later, just if they're in the area, they'll drop it off, you know, and then three years later they give us a call and they're like, hey, you signed up for the mulch. Do you, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, you know, drop it off. It was humongous. It was the the amount of mulch they delivered was commercial quantities of mulch. Luckily, it's a really big block here. And we had some use for it. But I've been chipping away at this thing for about six months and I still have a pile of mulch that's the biggest pile I've I've ever had of mulch. Correct me if I'm wrong. I hope I'm not talking out of school here. This happened to you before. The same guys delivered heaps of mulch. No, this is the same pile of mulch. No. Yeah, this is from... uh, You've been talking about this for years. November or December. No, no, November or December. 
Okay, I'm getting confused. November, December, so it's been I there for I haven't had. I don't recall any other mulch delivery. Oh, I'm not at this house. Not at this house. I was sure, but maybe uh, maybe I'm just getting my my years mixed up. My point is, I've been trying to shift this light. You know, it's it's soilish. You know, because trees and stuff all all kind of like you know ground up. Um. I've probably done about 200 crates of it. I have this plastic crate and I just slow, I just sort of fill it up mm-hmm. with my hands and a little shovel because it's just the easiest way. I pull it into it and I pick up the crate and I walk it over to where it needs to be. And I've been doing this forever. It takes ages to move soil. So we're talking three minutes of like, you know, huge, I don't know how thick a plate is, but sliding over each other. The amount of force and energy mm. required is just kind of unreal. Yeah, you would have been gutted if you were there. You would have been working on your mulching, and then the thing oh, happens, mulch, like, oh mulch. no, this is all going to get wrecked, and my big pile of mulch is going to go away. <laughs> and I realised that it took my slaves as well, and I would just be furious. Yeah, I'm yeah, just, but the mulch, more importantly, I uh, just to um and just to uh, you know, that was the deadliest non no, atomic explosion before. Yeah. Um, of course, they did actually detonate nuclear explosives Couple on of them. targets. Some, some um, crazy areas, yeah. And that killed, I think Hiroshima was 160,000 people. Yeah, that's mine. Just to give you an idea of... Um, grim, that is grim. Yeah, it's horrible. But that's that's only 30 years of what, you know, the US would have, you know, military would have called like progress, you know, because they were, they were blowing up, ten, they flew up 10,000 Germans in a day, you know, with yeah. the mine situation yeah. and they went, that's pretty fucking good. Like not the US did that, the British did that. But anyway, um, you know, it's all war stuff. Um, and then when are nuking people like 30 years later, fuck me dead. Jesus Christ. It's awful. What is it? It's something dumb. Like whenever you talk about the numbers, it becomes like space numbers when you talk yeah. about nuclear nuclear explosions. But Anything so, that happens rarely starts yeah. becoming really hard to understand because there's some wild stuff that goes on. But they do it in like tonnage of TNT, right? They do. That's how they they. That's how they. That's a kiloton, right? It's yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, in less um. Yeah, a little bit less death for you. Um, did you hear about the world's largest plant that was recently discovered? Oh, okay. Recently discovered. No, I, did not. Discovered. I didn't hear about it. In uh, Perth's backyard as well. No. Or should I say WA's backyard? No. Yeah. No. 4,500-year-old seagrass measuring okay. 180 kilometres in Shark okay. Bay. Okay. Okay. And, and, and whoa, 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 but like, wouldn't most of the seagrass around the world be pretty old, if not, you know, that old, there would be older ones, there'd be old ones going around, right? Apparently something, it's called like a polypoid or something. It's been, it, it's, a, it's some weird mutant that's got double the amount of chromosomes. So it, it's something that kind of went a little bit unusual and because, and so it doesn't have sex. It just, it just duplicates. It just, it just spawns off more of itself. You said this was a plant, right? Yeah. But okay. sex, but, but I mean, plants have sex plant through sex. flowers. So they they sure. exchange genetic information. This thing doesn't exchange any genetic information, but it has twice as much as any other um, equivalent seagrass. So, so it's the that's same cool. seagrass that's so lived has, for this time. Apparently, it has more ability to adapt to its. It, it doesn't. It has less long term genetic diversity because it's not having sex and exchanging genes. But because it has more inbuilt genes, it can handle more situations. It's just it just can't it can't mm-hmm. adapt long term. Like, um, yeah. So I mean, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. But it doesn't reproduce sexually, which is pretty weird. And um, they they were apparently the scientists were uh, investigating. They were studying how genetically diverse the sea meadows were, and they started like testing it. And they're like, why is it all the same? Wow. So you're saying like genetically, like two, like flowers, yeah, cross pollination or whatever, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't really get flowers either, to be honest. But um, they, the cross pollination happens, and the genetic information is not sunflower. The genetic in- information is the mixture of the two sunflowers or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. 
So they would there and is different get a chromosome is, of there is difference. Yeah, from the mother a chromosome from the mother mm. and a chromosome from the father. It's very interesting. Have you, you know, because I saw there was a, there was a dude who was putting like seven fruits on one plant. You ever heard about these guys who do the, um, you know, what they do when they scrape some of the, 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 the tree off and attach another tree and it, and it sort of like keeps growing it. Grafting. Yeah. Grafting. That's it. You ever, you ever grafted before? I've got a grafted lime tree, but uh, I didn't do it. I got given it. Yeah. Okay. So what do you mean? What's it grafted with? Well, Apparently, the lime tree wouldn't grow very well for whatever reason, and they just commonly graft it onto some other stump that grows that the stump's better than the lime stump or something. So they just kind of like graft it on, and that's how they sell them. It's uh, way more viable. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting. Way better than Mother Nature. I got you. Yeah. We, just, we got this. Well, don't worry. We'll just scrape off a bit of that fucking bit and put it on there. And, and Bob's your father's brother. It's very Frankenstein, isn't it? It's a little bit weird, but I kind of like it um, because I guess you could just have one tree in the future and you just have everything off it, right? Just chuck oh, everything that'd be great if you could actually really broaden it so you can have like a tomato. Absolutely. A OP just popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck the lot on. You can have your whole salad. You could get like a salad bowl plant and yeah. each, each sort of branch of it is a different item. We've got to be heading there, right? We've got to be heading there. Then you only have to look after one plant. That'd be great. Is there anything like uh, particularly bad about, say, like if we could synthesize, like synthetically create an apple? Yeah. Mm. Is that would that be fine? Would you be Would you be cool with that? Mm, I think so. If if it tasted like an apple, yeah, and it had all the bits that you need. Don't tell me it's a synthetic apple. You just had the same nutrients. Everything else. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Sure. Oh. I'll go for it. It's like when they genetically made that steak, right, in the lab. They grew that steak in the lab for like a million dollars or something. It was the most expensive steak ever made or something. That's common, um, right? That that kind of lab lab food is definitely, yeah. I mean, we've already got like 51% chicken. Not, you know, your, your chicken breasts and things. Uh, your, 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 your crumbed chicken steggles in your freezer. Oh, that's so funny. I just got reminded of another Norm McDonald bit. Yeah. Which is um, the, he says like I'm, a, I'm now I'm a strict vegetarian. He says, "Oh, you're a strict vegetarian? Yeah, 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 yeah. I only like I only eat chicken and fish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat chicken and fish. <laughs> it's just I think I think it's funny because it's probably the most like in my opinion like like chickens and and cows are like like the most obvious like." Uh, in terms of the way that they're kept, like the most barbaric. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it's just awful. Like, oh, we, man, you know, chickens, still, chickens have had a hard happily, time. Happily cut into our steak, right? Thinking that what we're doing is fine. Just not even thinking about, like, they we, we believe this whole thing about, oh, yeah, no, they love it. Cows love love their short I lives. Know, we, like, tell us love, we tell us love their short lives. They think it's great. They don't well, want to get old and die. They next to the barn in the field with the... You know, the sheepdog and the farmer, they're all having a great time. Exactly. But really, it's like, I don't know, it's like you get born and you're sentenced to death for being born. But <laughs> no, I guess so. That's the TLDR of it. No, look, it's, 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 uh, it's one of those things we'll probably look back on when we've got all the synthetic stuff going and go, man, I can't believe we used to do that. That is so barbaric. Like it's how did how did we how did we divorce ourselves from this responsibility? How did we do this for so many years? You know, Rex Hunt was on the telly, yeah. And yeah. Rex Hunt used to make stupid claims when he was fishing. I don't know if he made this claim or whether or not I'm just making it up, but from my childhood. But like he you know, he made the inference or or someone did that fish don't feel pain and that's why hooking them through the face with a metal hook is totally fine like fishing is fine rex was saying that somebody some fisherman from like you know who was on the telly right and i think carl dr carl did a thing on yeah fish do feel pain like you know they they, they absolutely do I'm not in my lane on this at all. I I understand (laughs) they feel pain because that's how you, if you don't feel pain, there's no incentive to, to avoid dangerous situations, right? If something's just nibbling on you, you're just like, it's all cool. It's cool. Like, you know, 
doesn't matter. Like you need the pain to be feedback yeah. to it to to live. Um, but I don't. Uh, this is I think this is where it comes from. I don't know how much feeling they have in their in in that bit of sort of cartilagey flesh <laughs> in their lip. So like it's going to be traumatizing as fuck to be pulled out of the water. I'm not oh saying that. God. It may yeah, yeah. it may I be. I think this is where it comes from. It may be that they don't really feel the hook. Maybe. I, d- I doubt that. I doubt that. Um, when uh, when I was living at home, um, we had a big swimming pool in the backyard. And oh, yeah. after the kids grew up, and that was like from the age of like 13 onwards, the pool and stopped you're getting... One, you're one of the kids, right? I'm one of the kids. You're one of the kids. After the age of, say, 14, 15, I don't know, maybe 16, the pool doesn't get used anymore. And after a while, it settles on a nice, dark, green colour. Beautiful. Um, enough algae to feed an army, yeah? Perfect conditions for life. My mum and dad put... Uh, what do you call them? Uh, like jilgies or marin? Would you call them marin? Something like marin? Yeah. Like little little claw little boys. Prawny, yeah, little prawny things, yeah. Little Trust claw boys. In. They put them in the shallow end on the stairs thinking they'll find their way, you know, they'll they figure find, it out. Find their way yeah. where? To greener pastures. So make just, your own. They're going to hop off the step, right? So they're going to go down the steps. Into Probably. The pool. Yeah. Were, Probably. were they planning on ever getting them back? Are they still alive? Oh, No. No, definitely not. They're long dead, those ones. Um, I, that was the first experiment. Did they did they survive long or you just don't know? Because they've just been the deep end, right? I think they died. Yeah, okay. I, th- I don't think they – I think they succumb <laughs> to their environment. Okay. Now, the next thing that my, my folks did is they went and bought seven like, little koi fish, babies, yeah. babies, like straight out of the – just spawned recently spawned yeah and they put seven koi in the pool nice and for the next 12 months nobody saw a koi didn't even think they were in there days would go by weeks would go by same thing happened as happened to the marin yeah exactly we just thought they'd succumb to the environment and that was the end of it right yeah well about a year and a half uh, into the experiment um, we start seeing the first koi coming out of the the, the shallows. We're well, coming out of the deep. With end, the confidence, the confidence to come. Just just cruising up, up around, yeah, just yeah. cruising around. There was probably, you know, like I said, there was probably seven of them. Right? They stood. They all started coming up, saying hello, getting some bread. We'd start feeding them, you know, like not not a lot, like because the the whole point was that they would survive on the algae and be able so to they eat. They're just algae. eating the algae. Yeah, for years, man. For years, for years. And it's for not years. oxygenated, right? The water's oh, the water's oxygenated by the algae. Exactly. Well, yeah. I just don't. I, I actually yeah. don't know. But they've just got an abundance of food source. Imagine just being in a room surrounded by popcorn. You'd just eat popcorn. You know what I mean? You'd just be eating all the popcorn. This is what they were doing uh, for <laughs> for for years and years. And um, seven sort of became fifteen. You know. Fifteen so became is, twenty-seven. How do they do it? Is there was there a female one in there? Do, like, do you, I don't know. Yeah, they must, know. right? They're I think it must. Have, it was either that or like a Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum, life finds a way scenario. You know, yeah, maybe yeah, the yeah. Jilgies got involved. Maybe the Marin sort of like <laughs> laid some eggs on the bottom of the pool, and one of the koi's fertilized the Marin egg. You know, who knows? A super creature, yeah. So we had about a hundred, I reckon, at okay. the height of the population of koi. A hundred. All just building off the algae. And, and whatever Maltesers you threw in there, the ecosystem. Yeah, they had it. They had it. Not Maltesers. We'd we'd actually like take. There were plants around the pool. Plants that Mum and Dad sort of like. They they're working on sort of hiding the the pool bits of the pool so that you could just walk out to this lovely pond, right? Instead, so it was all plants around the pool, and those plants produce these little fruits, and you could just throw them in there, and they'll come up and gobble them up, and learn that. Uh, they can trust the humans. The humans are going to help them out, sort of thing. So, was there a ringleader? Yeah, there was. Awesome. I think it was Stevie J for a while. Stevie J. Stevie Johnson. Yeah, Steve Johnson. Nice. Um, that was dad no, liked Stevie J. No, nah, he just it? had his um his koi color, like his pattern was like a, a jersey. Geelong, Geelong like yeah. No, nah, I think it was when he was playing for the other the other club at the time. Oh, I can't remember who Steve. Johnson he played was. for um Gold Coast or or Greater Western. He played for one of those two. Gold Coast? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, he got traded from I'll Geelong late, late and, he, uh, and, he, and he played a couple of seasons. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. I thought you meant before he came to Geelong. Sorry, no, I was like, no, yeah. no, it was 
yeah, sorry, it was after that. Um, so he was a big one. Um, there was a few. Uh, I can't remember all their names, man. I wish I could. Um, but uh, they, uh, you know, they would eat, have a great time. It's probably about a hundred of them. Now, as the ecosystem, how do you know sort of, that the Marin didn't survive? They're, or, they're gone. They're what gone. Are, what are think, you calling them? Jilgies. That's what we used to, that's what we used to call them yeah. as children. Yeah, that's the name for them. Like a jilgies. Like, All right. that was the sort of nickname for them. At least that's what I was told. There's so many different crustaceans. Yeah, okay. Jilgies. Yeah, and they're all great. Yeah, we love them. We love them all. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, at the height of the, the height of any crustaceans l- listening, we yeah. we love you we'll all. Prove. <laughs> we appreciate you. Um, and good job for sort of independently evolving a bunch of times. That's really impressive. But they just, they couldn't evolve one last time in the depths of your pool. No, nah, not these ones. Well, these weren't, these weren't crabs, but yeah, no, they couldn't do it. The, uh, the koi though, right? You're talking about seven turning into a hundred, right? Mm. That's a now, productive ecosystem. Pretty good. Probably over the course of nine mm. or so years, I reckon, maybe a bit longer or shorter. I can't really recall the exact sort of timings. Um, now, as that ecos- as that sort of ecosystem flourished, mm. as the koi became greater in numbers and also more comfortable around humans because they were occasionally feeding them and hanging out with them, right? Interacting, positive interactions, a bit of positive reinforcement. Yeah, then the water birds started coming along. Oh, the fucking water birds. Now, the, there's a lot of water, water birds where I grew up, so um, they were popping off. They were they were hanging out on the on the, on the, on nearby sort of roofs, and they'd sort of watch and then pick oh, off a couple. Geez. And every now and then, you'd find a body of a koi outside of the pool because they oh, pick no. them up, yeah. taste them, go, Ugh. I don't like this, and then oh, just spit they, them out. Does koi not taste good? Do birds not even like koi? I don't know if I don't know, or maybe they're just too big and they can't carry them, like because mm. they get they get oh, pretty chunky. Heavy. Yeah, quite chunky. Yeah. The reason I brought all this up was actually to talk about um, my father would take his fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Um, yeah. And he'd and he'd and he'd get the he'd get the hooks right, and I'd be like, "No, don't do that, man! Like, don't do that!" Oh, like, because they would they, be literally fish in a barrel because they're like eating. They had so much trust for all the things that your dad was probably feeding them. That's, that's, a, point point I, that's a point I never thought about. I wasn't thinking about that. But oh, yeah, you're, you're dead right. You're dead right. He would have had trust. Uh, they would have trusted him. He probably didn't even have to put bait on it. No, he 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 probably didn't. He probably didn't. Wait, so he hooked a fish. So what he'd do, right, is he'd tell me, he'd tell everybody that he grinds down the hooks. Right. They're kind of coming in at their own volition, right? That's that's how his brain was processing it. I'm <laughs> like the fish are coming in because they, well, like they want the to hooks, see what's on the edge of the fishing line or something. The hooks were ground down to not let the fish feel any like unnecessary pain. Were right? they piercing their... Probably a hundred percent, a hundred percent. It was doing nothing. It was doing nothing. So he'd like carefully reel them in, right, and like pull them out of the water and go like, "G'day, mate. How's it going?" Sort of thing. No, he wouldn't talk. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He wouldn't talk to it. But then he'd go, "Okay, mate. Here you go. Off you go. Off you go, mate. Yeah, have a nice day." And I was like, "That's so traumatizing." So you know what the equivalent is, right? It's me running into your house, grabbing you in the middle of the night, bagging you, right, bagging you over the head, and then the next thing you know is that your bagged head is now in a bucket of water because lifting out of the water is suffocation, drowning, however you want to look at it. It's suffocation. It's fucking deadly. It'll kill you if you stay suffocated or drowning long enough, right? So, and then, like, you, and then you just put me back in bed. There you go. There you go. There you go. Mate. There you go. There you go. Yeah, have a nice night, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just like the most traumatizing thing I can think of would be like in the middle of the, of the you know, oh, oh no, I say, even better, even better. I, I ring you up. I say, Nate, we're going out for dinner. I'll pick you up at seven, right? And at six o'clock, I rock up, go food's here, grab your head, put it in a fucking bucket of, of water and just, you know, just for a little while, just until you've sort of got an idea of it. The only difference is, is right, is that once that fish comes out of the water, it's now above water for the first time. It's like being pulled into a different reality. Dimension. Yeah. yeah. Heaven. Heaven. Let's call it heaven, right? Mm. He died and he went to heaven. Let's call it hell. I think it's probably hell for them. They can't breathe. Way closer to hell. 
all right? And so maybe, maybe for this will change like, the yeah. approach. It's like, no, no, that's, like that's like me saying, yeah, just like sticking your head in water, holding it in, and oh, it's going to heaven, and then you pop it back yeah, out. You're right. It's nothing like heaven. But let's let's take away the trauma just a little bit for this bit. Otherwise, yeah, it's yeah, not going to yeah, be yeah. funny. He gets taken out of the water. He's now in the new dimension, right? Yeah. And let's say it's Stevie J because he's the only one I can I can remember at this time. I'll, I'll get some more names for you some next names, week. Yeah, I'll, be yeah. able to, I'll be able to rattle off a few next week. But Stevie J goes back to the rest of the crew, says, guys, I had the weirdest fucking thing just happen then. I was and in the go, ninth circle of hell. Oh, well, no, Steve, let's see what happened. Let's see what happened, yeah. Steve, what happened? He goes, man, I was, there was a big – it was a big thing. Like, uh, you know, you know, the bread God, they'll talk about the bread God, you know, the bread God. Yeah. He took me under his wing and he, and he brought me to his dimension and my brain couldn't process it. And my lungs weren't working or whatever. I was struggling. Right. But I was in this like other dimension, but they wouldn't believe him. They wouldn't believe him. No. Well, Stevie J should go back and say he's the son of God. Yeah, he probably did. And that's probably what got him whacked in the end. Because um, Stevie J did die. Stevie J got picked off by a, we think, water bird, um, which was a pretty rough time because he, he was the alpha. He was the big guy. So there, had, there was a bit of a power struggle. After he, was, he, was probably, he was probably the stud as well. He was probably you know, providing all the You're not wrong. Down. There were, there were um, sort of dominant sort of uh, – there was a dominant sort of uh, pattern that was coming out because koi people who are really into koi will like will not don't want certain patterns. Koi people, yeah, people who are like koi breeders, they 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 breed the rare patterns. They want the super rare stuff, oh. so they don't just let them mate. All of them, they don't. So, do that. Oh, so they're actually selecting. They want them to look a certain way, and yeah, yeah, you know, depending okay. on what the person's like, you know. It's the same what... with dogs and everything, right? It's yeah. like breeding, yeah. Yeah, it would be the same thing, you know. And and, and I don't know if you know this. You, pro- I mean, you definitely do know this. But to all our listeners who probably also already know this, all um, our listeners, yeah, all of our listeners who probably I'll already take know one. This, I'll take one. We'll go from there. Koi get massive. Yeah, man. Like koi keep growing. Koi lived very long. I I I, I need this fact checked, but I reckon they live about eighty years. They, they live forever. Let's just yeah. go forever. Let's not fact check it. No, 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 no. I think it's around 80 odd years. What if they're immortal like a jellyfish? Um, not like a jellyfish, whoa, like that whoa, Portuguese. Whoa. There's the there's an immortal jellyfish. What are you talking about? It goes back to a, I don't know if it's the Portuguese man of war. I think I'm just thinking of that one because it's well known because it's so deadly. Mm. There's a jellyfish that goes back into its um, child. It, it's, it's like basically it's adolescent, adolescent stage. And mm-hmm. sort of rebirths, and theoretically, it can live forever, and have offspring. Doesn't really need to. It has offspring. Yeah, yeah. So it can have offspring at on each cycle. Yeah, pretty sure. Wow, wow. pretty wow. sure. Um, I don't know what it's called. I, I want to know. I'll just get it up now. I don't know if it is actually the. Yeah, let's, have oh, me. let's have it because we love it to the people to to give them the bottom of it. It's true. The bottom of it. You know, the mortal jellyfish that reset when damaged. Reset. Turret Pope. I'm not going to say that. I've lost it. Where is it? Okay. The only animal is known to have this remarkable. Blah, 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 blah. Only one animal is known to have this remarkable ability a species of jellyfish, Turipotus doneri. And that is exactly how you pronounce it. Okay. Discovered in the 1880s, Mediterranean Sea, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, man. Wow. Swim, settles on the floor, blah, blah, blah. Fully grown. Get to the T, what is it? TD. TLDR. TLDR. I need the TLDR on this. Yeah. Yeah, lose forever. Yep. Confirmed. Confirmed. Wow. Wow. And if you're wondering, koi can live anywhere from like 100 to 200 years. Like, you know, that's what the general vibe is. There's 100 years of, of leeway that the scientists put in for koi's potential age. So Stevie J died young. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They all did. Poor thing. He had yeah, his whole life ahead of him. I feel really sad for him now. Well, 
here's a question for you. 200 years of swimming around in the pool. No, that. no, no. Seven koi were put into the pool first. The original. They had no knledge of the outside world. This was their world for their whole lives. Mm. Short as they may what have been, the alpha was nine years old, you know? The, the next in line was eight years old. The next in line was five years old. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like who's going to inherit the, the sort of leadership. Yeah, the leadership after, after you know, one, is, one dies. I mean, it wasn't ever going to be 200-year-old Stevie J, you know? That was never going to happen in this koi society. So but still. So your dad doesn't have it anymore? No, 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 they don't have the uh, the koi uh, pond anymore, which is um, super sad. I really liked the koi. They were really great. Should have flushed them so they could live forever in the sewers. Yeah, uh, would that work? Would they be okay? Don't do that, by the way. I know don't you're probably that. just about to flush your, all your fish down the toilet. Don't do that. Wait a sec. Release them to the wild. I, I can just see them popping out the end of a tube into the ocean. Do they live in the ocean? Can they survive in the ocean? Are they just they'll very people? quickly swim up the Swan River into yeah, 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 bull yeah. shark territory? I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Uh, um, we live in a pretty deadly country. Sharks, spiders, desert, all that stuff. We live in a pretty deadly world, don't we? I think so. You ever felt particularly scared in snakes. Australia? Uh, a little bit for snakes. I've seen a couple of them from yeah. time to time. Not many. Not as many as you would think. But we do have the deadliest snake in the world hanging around. Is that the tiger snake? Uh, the Jew guide, I believe, is Jew pretty guide. deadly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is that correct? Is, are they really deadly? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think brown, I brown one of those. The brown snake's a bad one. Yep. yep. Very, naughty, oh, yeah. very naughty boy. I've seen one, but I've never, I've never felt like I was going to die to any of the Australian wildlife yet. Well, sure. Oh, no, yeah, I haven't. No, yeah, agreed, agreed. You haven't encountered like anything. Yep. You haven't encountered anything. I've seen some snakes, but they haven't really been posturing. Yeah, well, why would they? You're massive. You're a massive person. Like, why would why would it fuck with you? No, the only ones I've seen are, are sleeping, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Well, I nearly stepped on one at the beach. That was scary was because it? when, when I was yeah. probably about 13 years old, yeah. I was walking uh, back from the beach and I was just stepping on the sand and I stepped on this, I stepped in front of me and this Jew guy was like near my, my foot and it just scurried off. Like it just went away. Bit of an Indiana Jones sort of moment. Oh man. Uh, I think I was pretty shook in the moment because I was like, fuck, like that. Because, you know, much like other parts of the world, like the sometimes the smaller the poisonous thing is, the, the more deadly it is. Um, oh, so yeah, in the case yeah. of the Jew guy, it's not a particularly big snake. It's not like a car. It's not like a big python or a cobra. It's like a little snake, man, but it'll fucking kill you. Like, they just, oh, they man. carry that. The ones that freak me out are the, uh, the thick ones. The, one, the ones that strangle you. Yeah, That's yeah. the ones that can just, yeah. The one or, that's just jujitsu your ass. <clears throat> snakes in general man like a fine bite me i'll die right a poison bite right yeah. don't eat me don't dislocate your face yeah don't do that don't do that weird dislocating your face thing and fucking swallow me whole thing i don't want that no that's not cool that. man. Yeah, let yeah. me have the poison and i'll die and then you can do it later you know um have you seen that shot uh, i'll send it to you of the the snake in the Karajini national park been there you've been there as well haven't you yeah yeah just yeah, no, I'll have just, just pulling up a water buffalo you told there. me an interesting story many years ago though yeah um from your from when you were in africa is this with the bird yeah can you tell me that again <laughs> there was the the we were on like a essentially like a tour bus it was like a 25 day thing from yeah. cape down to um nairobi in kenya and we stopped in some national park in who the fuck knows where. It was like uh, Luffingham. Uh, I, I, I can't actually. It's all sort of merges into one um, in terms of where it was. Dude, I tell this story all the time. I yeah. feel like I can tell this story better than you at yeah. this point. Oh yeah, man, hit me. I'll, tell, I'll I'll correct you where you yeah where you go. Okay. Right. 
Yep. You, I don't mean to say I can tell it better than you. I'm just I'd saying, like, to. I'd love you to. Hit I tell me. the story a lot, man. I probably tell it more than you tell it That's at this hilarious. point. Yeah. Um. So you were at a sort of lunch stop. You yeah. sort of were between spots at the moment. You go on to the next one. You're having you're having a sandwich. Yeah. And you sort of take a bite of the sandwich, look away, and then look back, and the sandwich is gone. Confirmed, confirmed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty much. The, yeah, yeah. You and said it, to the guide, you said, well, the guide said, do you have any idea what sort of just happened to you? And you said, no, I've got no idea. And he told you that an eagle swooped from the heavens, essentially, fucking, I don't know, 60, 80 meters in the sky, yeah. targeted your sandwich and with lightning speed and like un, unmatched precision yeah. takes your uh, sandwich out of your hands without taking your hand with it because he probably could have. Um, oh, yeah, man. So it goes like this. That, that's pretty close. Good. It was, okay. it was a piece of frittata in <laughs> plastic. Uh, I had a sandwich, but I think I was in the frittata stage of lunch. It was a pre prepackaged lunch they give you. And it was it had a little bit of – I had like clad wrap on where my fingers were touching the frittata because I didn't want to touch it myself. Mm. And they, they warn you. They said um, when you're getting off the bus, like be careful. The eagles will like take your lunch, you know, kind of thing. Just be wow. careful. I didn't think much of that. I remember when you said it, I was like, I got this, like a bird – you know, what do you mean? I didn't think he was going to take it right out of my, out of my hand. I thought like it could be something unattended or. Sure. or yeah. like and I've pigeon. taken one, I've taken one bite of this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's not huge either. So it's not like a big target. And the next thing I know, I feel this whoosh, whoosh. Is coming <laughs> right over my shoulder and clean taking the frittata and I'm left holding the plastic and it's, absolutely just taking the whole thing and and he says that they you know have great eyesight great precision they had they have huge talons that thing would take your finger if it mm. but it wants it doesn't want to it doesn't want the fight for the you know it doesn't want to hit something that's I don't know if it's thinking this deeply into it, but it, it knew what it wanted. It knows what the frittata is and it just nabbed it. And I was I, I had this rush of um adre- like adrenaline like shock. Because it happened, I was like, "Am I all right?" I was like, "Man, this is." It went. It was a big. It's a big bird going right past my shoulder. It was like pretty much. I think I was almost going in for the second bite. You know, that's how I'm not holding this thing out of the <laughs> thing. Yeah, I've got a bent arm. I'm just holding it near my face, and it, it was pretty incredible. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the animal a bit of cred here as well, but I'm gonna say like, um, they know what the deal is. They know about the frittata. It's they know about. Think. They know about you. They know about the tour guide. They know about about me. That's getting really personal. Like, no, but they know about you as in like they know that there's going to be people who are coming with frittata. I'm a sucker. And for whatever reason, it loves the frittata, and it and um and 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 it knows what it wants, and it takes it. Um, it could have picked a a better target than you to take it from if it didn't want to fight. You know what I mean? Like, there's surely like there's a lot of like uh, you could have punched it in the face. Probably some smaller people. Didn't care. That it just didn't view you as a threat at all, mate. It went. Oh, no, that's my I hope that the frittata went it. to its um, its offspring. I hope it took it back to the nest and said, "There you go. Share out some frittata. Everyone gets a bite. Yeah. That would make you feel good, a bit, bit warm but inside." When they said, "Be careful, the eagles will take your lunch," are they talking about like the eagle? You know, the eagle in town, the one who takes lunches. He is. Notorious. He's there every day. Probably, one day. probably attacks the other birds if they start mm. hanging around the the lunch the spot. Yeah, yeah, it probably mm. it probably gets really protective of it because it knows it's mm. fertile hunting ground for frittata. Oh, totally, totally. This thing would have had like a six foot wingspan. I got a picture of it um, when it was just flapping around. Got a of it. I got a picture of it after after oh, the in event. The sky. In the sky. But so you, you know, know roughly how high it was then. Uh, well, I could show you the picture. I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess from memory. I haven't looked at the picture in, you know. Like, like it's cruising altitude. Or, I think it was on the way back up. It was probably, it was pretty, because I wanted a picture of it to remember it by. After that, I was like, man, that was like, that was mm. wild. I'm going to take a picture of this bird. Yeah. I was impressed. I was I was very impressed, actually. Um, I would have given it to it. That's the thing. If it just sort of asked... Yeah, no, it's not in the business of asking. 
I would have gladly have handed it over, but um, do you know? Do you know what's kind of sad about that is that you were an easier mark for that particular day's lunch than actually going and doing what you evolved to do, which is like kill everything else. You know what I mean? Like pick up a rat or whatever you you do. You know, like whatever you usually prey on, just gets the day off because frittata man. Is yeah, coming. I, I was and the cool. I was the the soft target, right? I was the low hanging fruit. Oh, like, this this chump. No, mate, you're the you're the savior. You're the savior for those other species. You've um you've done a really good thing out there. The place where really we were having lunch was next to an elephant graveyard. One of those, hmm. one of those um, straight from Lion King, kind of, or or a little bit like from The Simpsons, where it's a it's a, maybe I don't know if it's a tar pit or if it's a swamp or something like that. I don't know if it's got quicksand properties or what, but the elephants just all know to go there to die. Yeah, it's smart, right? It's got to be well, evolutionarily it's, based. It's, it's really, it's kind of like a graveyard. I get, well, I mean, that's why it's called an elephant graveyard. But so elephants I mean, sort of go. When, when, when I'm gonna like die, I don't walk to the graveyard and just kind of lay no, down. No, we don't have that. That uh, the intuition to sort of plan it ahead. <laughs> so I'm just going to save everyone the trouble. I'm actually dying tomorrow, so uh, I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll catch you later. <laughs> That's a real skill. Just like they just walk in there. I wonder if they if they sit around like some elephants might get it wrong. They they walk in the graveyard and they're just there for a week, going like, oh, I think I may have. I, I just had a cold. I thought I was dying. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another bloke across the corner, and you're like, hey man, how are you? And he's like, yeah, good, but uh. <clears throat> Unluckily, got hit by a Komodo dragon the other day, so I'm just hanging out here till I, uh, till I fucking succumb to the uh, the bacterial infection, you know. And you think an elephant graveyard would attract all these um, animals and things because you just got all these carcasses? Yeah, um, there's a there's a um, there's a t- there's a quote from uh, Donnie Darko where it's all about um, he's thinking about death. He's talking to his psychiatrist, and she sort Donnie of says Darko. like. How did it make you feel? And he says, like, it reminded me of my dog because the dog, when it felt like it was dying, it went under the house. It just went and retreated under the house. And um, and dogs do that so that they so that they die away from the pack, so that they don't bring predators to oh, the area, much like okay. the elephant. They'll yeah, go off to yeah. die somewhere so that they don't bring um, trouble. That, that's really noble. Yeah. So she sort, of, yeah. she sort of prompts him and says, oh, she, he went to um, – Oh, so you're saying the dog went away to die? Um, and he's like, no, the dog went away to be alone. You know, so it could die. Yes. Um, well, it's a really, it's a, it's a good movie, eh? That's a really, it's a bit of a throwback at this point. I can't believe how old it is now. But uh, no, good, good film. I've already got hot shots on my list, so we can't add any more movies. Oh well, uh, well one I'm movie a week. I'm going to try and be one movie a week kind of guy. Yeah, well, That's um, a- can you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you again. I've asked you before. I'm going to ask you again. How are we doing on the Matrix 4? I did it. Oh, no, yeah, you didn't. Did yeah, I did it. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't. You did well to, to, keep, to keep it together when we were talking about the Matrix as well and not give anything away when we were talking okay, about no, Agent Smith, right? right? Because that was... Nothing away because I because I I actually treat them as like uh, sort of like the Star Wars mediums. Like there's the original trilogy for the Matrix, one, two, and yep. three. And then there's this thing, whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually didn't hate it, but I came in with those really low expectations because of everyone said how garbage it was. I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was weird how it talked its, about itself, itself. In, in, yeah, yeah. in sort of third person. Yeah, it's self-referential. It's, yeah, um, yeah. I thought that was funny. I was going to only expect that movie in it. It had... It was super weird. And there's a scene where they're talking about creating, the, I think, the game or whatever. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I the, think uh, there's a, spoilers about this one now. It's I'm spoiling months. The Matrix 4. Sure. I'm spoiling The Matrix 4. There's a scene where the, they're sort of talking about the next game and they're like, oh, we want to do this, we want to do this. And they're, they're talking about the industry of like, oh, they just want the same crap transed yeah. out again. Yeah, yeah. They're still referencing the, the, the Matrix, obviously. But yeah. the, the sort of backstory is, is that the director – because originally it was two directors, um, uh, the Wachowskis, and they they did the first three, and okay. then it's just Lana uh, Wachowski who did four, right? Right. Um, the other the other the other uh, siblings not involved, um, and the 
the executives were like, you need to make Matrix 4 because we have the rights to it and we want another movie. And I think Lana's like, look, uh, I don't want to do it. But um, they're like, okay, well, if you don't want to do it, we're just going to do it, which they sort of talk about in The Matrix 4. Mm. Like as mm. they're just going to do it without you. They don't care about you. They don't care. Like they're, they're, they're bigger than you. They're just going to go over your head. So in the movie, she's sort of talking about that and about how that sort of happened to her, where she was sort of held over and said, look, you, you got you to do this. And so she, it's kind of like a protest movie almost, man. It's like, a, I'm just going to make this yeah okay you few references yeah like so you can't like fuck with my, my my baby it looks great it looks great and that's one thing yeah, about the yeah. first one when you actually go back to the matrix one in mm. was it 99 2000 99 it doesn't actually look as good as i remember it but that's it's obviously going to be the case right they had yeah the it was matrix is what it is man yeah. uh, a groundbreaking mm. movie for the special effects uh departments right a a a massive success in making everybody question their reality again um like the truman show did really fucked with people um it makes a lot about what the actual matrix trilogy trilogy was about and it gives you a lot of um everyone Mm. has their own idea of it and because we were talking about it um i like the capitalist exploitation type uh Mm sort of idea but the idea is no one knows there's so many different interpretations of it but mm. it, about the agent smith thing it was really the yin yang type situation mm. wasn't it yeah definitely and the sort of like it was weird seeing him again <sighs> i still i still found the movie very strange and it's been a while since i actually watched it you've got to have this fresh in your mind i'm struggling to remember much about it well i was um it was some some of it was kind of gimmicky and shit. Like, what is Lawrence? What, what's Lawrence Fishburne doing? They just couldn't couldn't. Um, I don't think they asked him to be in it. Yeah, he's just too old. Yeah, I mean, I thought um, a friend of ours, um, uh, Damo, he actually said what they should have done is like a Morpheus freeing Trinity situation, where it's like a it's like a prequel in that it's covering the period where. Uh, Fishburne, like Morpheus, is walking around looking for the one and finds Trinity, right? Yeah, okay. And oh, that's, yeah, begins yeah. the movement or whatever, starts the Nebuchadnezzar up, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the ship. Mm-hmm. Because that, to me, is a better story than the one that they gave us. Um, but that's just because I was just I – was, I was so weirded out by the movie. Oh, yeah, 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 it was very – it was very difficult to follow, but I haven't right. really thought about it too much. I have never seen so many no-handed cartwheels in my life. <laughs> but now, was, that, now that the uh, now that the movies are complete, now that now that the, now that you've seen all four, right? Yeah, yeah. Are we are we ready to talk about the one again? Are we ready to talk about the one again? Well, I, this one makes a bit of an argument. Like Trinity seems pretty important in the whole thing, but Neo, yeah. Look, I, I'll, I'll stick with Neo on that one. But I, I well, do you think Neo is still the one? Well, um, uh, at the end, right of the movie, yeah, she's the one zipping around. It's doing, yeah, the, no, she, doing yeah, she's doing the, the flying and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, um, true. I thought Trinity was for some reason, but it makes no sense for her to be the one in the, in the sense that, well, she does say the Oracle does say to her that you'll fall in love with the one. Maybe she falls in love with herself. Well, maybe they are both the one. That's sort of what I was thinking, but um, Together, she seems but, to have a lot more power. Yeah, like you're saying, to change the matrix because she's chopping, and you know she seems to have her way with the the analyst, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew he, I knew he was evil. I knew oh, the course, psychologist right from the get go. I saw him. I was like, oh, okay, he's therapist. Something's well, he's going. He's literally like, blue pilling yeah. Neo at the start of the movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. No, like, but I, I also vehicles, but I forgot that well, I didn't think where he got them from. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to say all the stuff I've said about the movie without saying something that I did really like about the movie, which is um, Morpheus's imprint, digital imprint, escaping the the Matrix. Is, is like, this? Yeah. So is this the Morpheus, the, the AI the storm, version yeah. of Morpheus or whatever got out? And then they use those projective machines to uh, project their um, digital selves Mm. into the real world so that they can, because it's um, 
It's actually part of the extended canon because we're talking about Matrix 4 now. That's part of canon. That's Matrix canon, um, which means it happened. Um, yeah. And and uh, and there was also a video game called The Matrix Online, which was meant to be an MMORPG. Yeah, so it was basically like you pick whether or not you want to be at the start. You'd pick between human, agent, or machine, okay. or or machine something else. Whether it, there was the machines that hate humans, there was the machines that like humans, there was the machines that didn't give a shit, and then there were the humans. You could kind of pick between these factions, and this was sort of like the aftermath of the war, and sort of like what happened to these various groups. Like because the Matrix Four has the whole. Oh no, no, some machines really like us and want us to do okay. Like they're good machines. Like they're the good ones. They're 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 goodies. Mm -hmm. You know, they did that. Mm -hmm. And that was cool because it sort of honors that 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 storyline that they wrote all those years ago, because the Wachowskis wrote The Matrix Online and all the right, other games. Right. Okay. So keeping all that, like not just not destroying any of the past, keep all that. It's all good stuff. Um and it's and it's believable. Um, that was a good thing. I did like that about the movie, about the the robots making peace. Some of the, some of the machines yeah. making making friends. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I like that. Like it. Like everything. There's uh, good things and bad things in uh, you know people. There's you know good. I always use the example lawyers. Good lawyers, bad lawyers. There's. Uh, you I'm know, surprised that you said the stuff about Matrix One looking um, dated. I guess. Yeah, is where I think, you I sort think, of yeah. 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 I thought that the special effects in Matrix Four were. Real bad, man. Uh, Real something bad. a bit weird, a, a bit more CGI. -y. I liked um, Neo's Hadouken Sonic Booms that he was doing, but it was weird. He just kept doing this force field thing. Right? I got really addicted to it. Like everything, was, he was just force fielding everything. I was like, what? I was like, man, just put yourself that. in a force field bubble and and yeah, he's always live out your days. And, yeah, it's live out your days. Um, what was freaking me out is when. They, they he activated like swarm mode or whatever it was, and all the people mm. were just jumping out of the building. Oh my god, oh. super weird! Fucking hell, super weird. I mean, the Matrix One, that the, the the threat of the agents was that they could assume anyone's body in the nearby area who's connected to the Matrix, right? Yeah, so they could yeah. just like morph into them and sort of be in that current space and time. It's like teleporting, right? Mm. This one is it's like, how do we one up the agents' cool move where they take over? A person how do we do that on a grand scale and it's essentially create human zombies which was again yeah. real bad yeah real bad yeah real bad save no and save nothing that's a bit much um, and then he was, uh, he was like, introducing it like check this out my new swarm mode baby and i'm like fuck man like your machines you're calculated you're not you're not excited you're not giddy anyway yeah um, when I saw that Morpheus is that collection of atoms, it reminded me of this thing I read ages ago about there were some physicists that I thought he won some prize for determining the most efficient form of like of life or consciousness or something like that. I was trying to find this today and I couldn't actually find it. It's a swarm of iron atoms that's like 50 kilometres across or something that just exactly like Morpheus's character was kind of moving and, and, and okay. reacting. So it's all, it, it must be to do with magnetism and mm. yeah, it's a small, I don't understand. It makes no sense. Right. And I, I was Googling it today. I was like, man, I swear I've, I read something about some guy, you know, it made no sense to me at the time, but just cause I'd watched the matrix it sort of like piqued my interest, but um, <laughs> like, maybe that was all bullshit. Cause I could not find, you know, swarm of iron atoms, you're talking about those things yeah. that you could push your hand into with the pins. Yeah, and then kind on the other of. side, you look at yeah. it and you're like, oh, there's the hand. But you're talking about that on like a face level and like a... Well, oh. in, but in space as well so that they mm. somehow use magnetism to, you know, fucking move around. I don't know. Yeah, it bro. makes no sense. Yeah, eh? bro. Um, but the best part about it is the um, Radom ending, wake up by Rage Against the Machine at the end. Yeah, well, it was, it, was it Rage doing it again or was it another band? It was an orchestra. It, it was an orchestral Was component. it a girl band? Was um, it Pussy Riot or something? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't think it was a, I didn't think it was a girl. Oh, okay. I might be wrong. No, it was, it was very Radomy, but with maybe a bit of an orchestral component to it. Yeah, okay. I'm down. I haven't heard that. I, I love a bit of Radom, man. I forgot you know, you know, I knew all the words to it. It just, it just something triggers in me. Like just before it starts, I wouldn't know the first, the first two words. 
mm. the first line. I couldn't tell you what they are. And then just yeah. before it starts, I was like, whoa, something's happening. Hey, um, here's a good one for you. You know how we talked about um, encoding knowledge into culture? Yeah. You know, there's a song, right? And I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give you the lyrics off the top of my dome, right? Yeah, hear me. This will just give you an idea of how you can encode knowledge into culture, right? Um, our galaxy itself contains a hundred million stars. It's a hundred thousand light years side to side. It bulges in the middle, sixteen thousand light years thick. But out by us, it's just three thousand light years wide. The sun and you and me and all the stars that we can see are moving at a million miles a day in an outer spiral arm at 40,000 miles an hour of the galaxy we call the Milky Way. Now, that's a song, right? Yeah. But, if you, but and I just know the lyrics, right? But there's so much information in oh, that. So much. And the only reason I know that information, and albeit it's it's 50 years old, it was probably it was made in the 70s, like that song, or, or maybe even the 60s, mm. 70s. Um, and some of it is wrong. I mean, the, uh, the, the Cosmos, uh, TV series only had to make two amendments, I believe when they re-released it 25, 35 years later, um, they had to make okay. two changes to the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Most of it holds up. Most of it, you can either just, uh, go with it or double it, you know? So our galaxy itself is 100 million stars. So just 200 yep. million. Easy. Yep. Um, there, there is another verse um, in Wait, the song with uh, more encoded information. Million stars? Is it in our galaxy? I thought. Is it? I thought it might be hundred billion. I've th- I've seen I've seen trillion thrown around as well, three trillion or some shit. I um, I think, like I said, there's going to be some stuff you're going to have to. Yeah, a hundred thousand million. A hundred thousand million, which is a hundred billion. Hundred. Billion. That's that's almost ten times what they said. No, wait, more. But man, we couldn't detect them. Like you almost can't blame them, right? It was only in our lifetimes that we f- that we figured out that there are planets orbiting other stars. We yeah, didn't yeah. know if any other stars had orbiting planets. People assumed they didn't because they just think we're special. Because how do you detect that? It's really hard to spot a planet. It's hard. You know, stars are hard enough to see. Mm, to see yeah. a dim planet orbiting it is very, very difficult. Agreed. And now um, they realise half, they estimate half the stars have orbiting planets. So, you know, half of 100 uh, billion, you got 50 billion. If they yeah. just have one planet each, you got 50 billion planets. Yeah, yeah. In, in yeah. our one of... The reason why I know it's a hundred, well, the reason why I thought it was about a hundred billion stars in our galaxy is it's the same order of magnitude for how many galaxies there are. There's about a hundred, estimated to be a hundred to two hundred billion galaxies. Yeah, it's interesting how that all fits together, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's the the other part of the song, right? And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remember it, like, so I can just get it out. But um, Please. it's something like the universe itself keeps on expanding and expanding in all of the directions it can whiz as fast as it can go, the speed of light, you know. 12 million miles a minute and that's the fastest speed there is um so remember when you're feeling very small and insecure how amazing and unlikely is your birth and pray that there's intelligent life somewhere out in space because there's bugger all down here on earth it's such a good fucking song man it's done so well and the movie's so good the meaning of life um oh my god yeah yeah. no intelligence here on earth i know i certainly subscribe to that I'm I'm the living proof. <laughs> oh man, no, we we can't be so hard on ourselves because although it was amazing and unlikely that we were born, you know, we did it. Yeah, we're here, man. Um, I always like to hold that over my father. I sometimes I look at him and I go, you know, this is the sperm that won, right? This is the best. <laughs> this, this is the, the best, best you got. got. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is the best one. <laughs> yeah, you had millions others, but none of them made it except for me, mate. And my brothers, you know what I'm saying? But in that particular one, one in a million, whatever, this is the best one. You always hold that You over. won a race to the death. Yeah, it was me or someone else, man. 100 million sperm were all racing for the prize and you fucking did it, mate. I'm the fucking king, man. The rest of them must be fucking dreadful. Like the ones that I beat, man. Thank God. Because they Please would have been like trash. <laughs> hey man good job i had a great time yeah mate um, always a pleasure we're gonna do it again next week 
If you want to get in touch, email us, vacuousperspective at mail.com. Um, flick us an email. Flick us an email. We'll read it on the show. Yeah, we'll read it. Um, and and, um, and, uh, and uh, see you next time, uh, Nate. It's been lovely. See you, Val.